Hey, I'm Sir Katrama, and today we're talking about the four, it's really going to be three, but the four types of injectable testosterone that's used in a testosterone replacement therapy. Um, so, first of all, I want to say if you're on a, te on a uh, topical testosterone cream, if you're using a dermal testosterone and it's working for you, you know what? Keep at it because if it works, it ain't broke. Don't try to fix it. And, you know, if you're having good success with a topical and, uh, and you feel good with that, more power to you. Rock on. I mean, uh, you know, under the care of a physician, topical testosterone can be just as powerful as injectable testosterone. So, you know, feel good about what you're doing and keep on going. But uh, today we're talking about those injectables. Um, and the first one we're going to cover is enanthate. And enanthate is actually considered to be an endogenous androgen, which is the exact thing that your body makes when it's making testosterone, just not enough of it. So uh, enanthate is well tolerated in the body by most uh, people. I don't know anybody who hasn't been able to tolerate enanthate yet, but most people that I know who have problems with other testosterones can go on enanthate and, and seem to tolerate it really, really well. And so, um, enanthate is in that same category with our second testosterone that we're going to talk about, which is sipinate. Sipinate's actually an eight carbon ester of testosterone, which means it's a synthetic testosterone. It's not a real testosterone, exactly what your body would produce, um, but it's going to act exactly like testosterone. And uh, the people who I've known who were put on sipinate and couldn't tolerate it really well went to enanthate and work perfectly for them. So, you know, if you're a guy who tries a testosterone replacement therapy, and most of the people in my experience, their, their physician starts them out on a sipinate. And if you go on a sipinate and you don't tolerate it really well, um, you can always have a conversation with your doctor about switching you over to an enanthate. Now, because enanthate is, uh, you know, an endogenous version of testosterone, in my experience is it costs a little bit more. Um, but again, well tolerated. I, ha I haven't known anybody who they tried to put them on enanthate that it wasn't tolerated well. The dosing for sipinate and enanthate are actually pretty similar. And the other thing about uh, sipinate and enanthate is that they both take, you know, a couple weeks, maybe a couple months to build up in your system to get your, do to get your uh, blood values in your labs where they want them to be. So it takes a little while to build up in the system, get you where they want you, but enanthate and sipinate, great injectables. Um, the only thing that I've ever heard anybody say about sipinate that they didn't tolerate really well was pain at the injection site. Uh, I've had a, a few friends who, they said that their physician felt like the sipinate uh, because its carrier is cottonseed oil. Um, was probably the issue. So you switch them over to an anthate and seem to go really well for them. So there's, there's an option for you if, you if your physician starts you out on sipinate and you don't tolerate it really well, you can always uh, try to go over to an anthate. The third testosterone that we'll talk about is propanate. Propanate's a little bit different because it is a really slow release but a fast half-life version of testosterone. And because of that, it can actually get blood values for labs up within hours in some individuals, it may take days or weeks in others, but it really goes into action pretty quick and it gets those uh, testosterone lab values right where they want them in a very short period of time. Now, I have known a, a few people who uh, went in and they had extraordinarily low lab values on testosterone. They were put on a propanate to start them out and phased into a sipinate or an enanthate um, to kind of stabilize them for the long-term care. Um, the reasoning they were given for that is because propanate has such a, you know, fast release, um, their physicians were worried about aromatization, um, in the body because of how fast it can release and because of how fast it just pours into the system. And again, what do we deal with when we deal with aromatization? Well, we deal with the possibility of the creation of estradiol, um, the male version of estrogen and or the potential of creation of DHT, which would cause you to lose your hair, right? So um, rather than taking an aromatase inhibitor or medications to stop you from losing your hair, they would get you into the lab values where they need to be real quick with a propanate phase and a sipinate, and then uh, you know feel like they could keep you stabilized at a, at a fairly low number um, on a sipinate or an enanthate and do maintenance on there. Again, because 
our goal here is to try to get our numbers where they need to be that we feel good and everything's working the way it should be but we don't have just an overabundance in our body that's that's going around and so you know um that that's kind of what we're aiming for and that propanate can get you there so fast but the risk being that the aromatization of it is so quick um, that you would start to have the adverse effects of testosterone much quicker than you would have on a sipinate or an enanthate. The fourth type of injectable testosterone that I'm going to talk about, I don't know a single individual who's on a testosterone replacement therapy, TRT program, by a physician who takes a testosterone suspension. Okay, and testosterone suspension is carrying water. It's pure testosterone, it's carrying water. Um, and it's just a really, really potent form of testosterone. Um, the, the problem with the testosterone suspension, and I do know a couple of people who take it. Um, I, I've advised them against it. It's, it's most of the time younger guys who aren't looking out for their health. Um, and aren't worried about the risk benefit of what they're doing and they're just trying to put on mass as quick as they can but the potency of a testosterone suspension is just enormous and these guys like i watch them they come in the gym and they get huge quick and you know again they're young you know they're not worried about their heart they're not worried about long-term health effects of testosterone um the two that i know for sure take a suspension uh, or on a anti aromatase or aromatase inhibitors um, you know they're taking finasteride to keep them from losing their hair they're you know they're chasing the the byproducts of the testosterone suspension that they're taking again and I, I you know what I'm open if if any of you guys are on a legitimate physician directed TRT program and you're on a testosterone suspension I would love to hear about it and please please put the comments down below I'd love to hear what your physician's doing with you and whether or not you have to take the aerobitase inhibitors or whether or not you have to take the finasteride because again I've, I've not heard of a single person on a TRT program who's on testosterone suspension but it is injectable testosterone um, yeah, those are those are really the four main types of testosterone uh, injections that people will take. Uh, the first three, like I said, in my experience, are the three that physicians use for uh, TRT programs. And you know, if you guys uh, if you guys have unique experiences with any one of the three, or all three, or two of the three, and uh, you know your physician started you on one and moved you to another, and you didn't tolerate the first one, but you tolerate the second one better, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Um, cause I'm always up to learning from other people's experiences and, 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 you know, gaining the insight of what you've experienced sometimes when I get people who hit me up and, and ask, you know, questions or, or, or seeking knowledge and I can kind of pass on to them what your experiences have been. So I appreciate it. And, uh, I'm Trick or Trauma. You guys have a good week.